Good morning everyone. Welcome back to the JavaFX um, development class. Today we will learn to develop a simple um, interface by the combination of the component that we, we've already taught. Today we are going to develop a simple login page where we'll have a username field, a password field and a button. This field will be will have a combination of components uh, of uh, containers. Here we will use together we will mix um, flow pin together with anchor pin, H box, and probably V box. Yes. So let's get started. This is the like of what we want to do in our program. This one is developed. So let's analyze the. The actual page here we have uncover uh, we have a flow pin as the base pin this this pin here this white background here will be the flow pin why this one containing every other thing inside here will be anchor pin this one is a label we, we have a label that is anchored to this anchor pin to the top and the left and right all right so we have a V box inside the anchor pin as well the V box contains the text field and the password field. And then inside the anchor pin again, we have a button. So we will learn to mix this component and then we'll have uh, a sensible interface from JavaFX. So let's get started. Now, according to what we have here, that means we have to every other thing are inside um, the, this, this stage. So let's create our stage our stage first. So we already have a stage that is injected here so we'll just learn to show it the way we used to do. So primary stage dot show. This met method will be able to show the, the stage. And then before showing the stage we have to create a scene where we want to put our component. So that's, that's why I'm going to create a scene for the stage. Set scene as what? I'll create a scene right away new scene then like i said this component inside the scene this white background here will be the flow pin and that flow pin will have an alignment justified to the center all right so that is what i'm going to do here i'm going to create a flow pin first flow pin pin let's call it base pin base pin is equal to new flow pin all right so this is the flow pin that will be that will take every other component and it is the one that will be inside the scene and that is what i have done now i have a flow pin i have the scene and i have the stage everything inside one another although there is nothing inside the, the flow pin for now later we'll put every other thing inside it but let's see what we have first so So correct, we have our flow pin inside here and the flow pin is contained in the scene and the scene is contained inside this particular stage we have. So let's go on, let's create our, uh, uh, our anchor pin that houses every other thing inside the flow pin. So we'll create the anchor pin here, we'll say anchor pin. Uh, let's call it container is equal to new what new anchor pin so new anchor pin correct so the anchor pin will be housed inside the flow pin so that is why I'm going to add it directly inside here so I'm going to give the anchor pin a border and like we have here the anchor pin is going to take a border with this particular uh, almost blue black blue black color so I'm going to create that border from the background property so I have to create a background first a background object the background object is inside the javafx.scene.layout so don't forget to import that. So I'll have a background. Let's call it um, uh, container background. 
after the after the name the name of the component that will, that will take the background so I'll call it container background is equal to what new background you know a background will have background fill a number of background fields so here I will create a single one a single background field I'll say new background field So the, this background field is the one that will take the color, the, uh, the, the, the color of the component, which will be white, and the radius, the corner radius, which will be what? Is empty, actually. So I'll have corner radius of empty, and then inserts of empty. Now this is the background, all right? Now I, I want to add this background to, the, to my container. So I'll say container that set background, as what that set background as what container background the same way i want to create a border for it so i'll create a border color a, a border uh, um, a border object so i'll say container border so is equal to new what new border this border is going to take either border images or border strokes here we want it to have the blue black border so that is why i'm going to create it as a border object so that is what i'm going to do is equal to new border stroke all right so and the border stroke takes a number of parameter it's it has the method the the constructor is overloaded as well we have a constructor that takes four parameters one that takes five and another that takes about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six parameters. In fact, more than six parameters. Okay, so we have our color. So that's blue black color. We'll have it here as a web color. And that is why I'm going to provide it as a string here. So I'll provide it as a string. And that is what I have. Then the stroke, the stroke style is going to be solid. So have a solid background, non-breaking lines. If I want my, my the, the border to be kind of dashed, I'll I'll take the border stroke style to to be what to be dashed. And if I want it dotted, I have the the option there. And if I want none, I will just choose none. So then the corner radius, I don't have. I don't want any radius, so I'll have to put what? So here, let's put default, which will be 1. All right? So 1 pixel. Now let's apply the border to the container as well. So I'll say container dot set border to what? The corner border. And that is what I have. All right? So now let's set some size for our container. So let's say container dot set what? Set width set pref width let's use set size to give it the width and the height at the same time so let's give it 300 by 400 now this is what we have if i show this container here now we'll see what we have and that is it all right this is the blue black border and the background is white just like I have done here, I created a white background. I created a border that has this color, that takes this color. If I want it to be dotted, for it, like I said the other time, I put dotted border here. If I run this program, you see the border style, border stroke style has dotted. So that is what we have. You see, this is not a solid line it is kind of dotted like dot 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 so if i want it dashed as well i provide dashed if i want none i provide it as none so just try it out and see what you have here i want to use solid and i want to change this border width from one from one to like uh, to make it bolder i want it to be like um maybe two pixels each so this one will be bolder than the other. 
So that is what we have. All right? The border, the, the, the stroke is now kind of thicker than what we had earlier. So now let's continue. And if we let, check out this page, you'll see that this particular page is, n is not aligned to the left. But rather, it is placed at the center. So how can we achieve that? That is the main reason why I used flow pin at, in the first place. Although there are a number of components that has that capability as well. But I used flow pin as one of them. So that is... If you want that to happen, you, I know you, you, you can guess what that is. Just set alignment, then the position. Then you have what you have. So setting the position property to center brings whatever component I have on the anchor pin to the what? To the center. I mean, to, on the flow pin to the what? To the center. And that is what I have here. Instead of having it aligned to the top left by default, I want it at the center anytime. Anytime and that is what I have. All right? Just by calling this property set alignment. So that is what we've achieved so far. Now we want to place our component, individual component, on the anchor pin. So this anchor pin is going to take a label, just like I have labeled it. This label is going to take the, the text, the welcome page. So how do I create something like that? First, I have to create the text. I mean the label. So I have a label. I can use a label or I simply use text. Well, let's use label. So I say label. Uh, let's call it header label is equal to what? New label. And that is what I have. The text I want on it, I want it to be the welcome page. All right? That is it. The welcome page. So now I want to put my label on my anchor pin. I can simply put it here or just use the get children method of adding components to uh, a container. All right? So I can simply put it here because I have everything set. So I say header label, then that's what I have. The label spelling is incorrect. That is not important actually, because it, you can simply use whatever name you want for variables. All right? So but to have it the right way, so we have it, label. Now I have my label on my anchor pin. You know, when you place any component on an anchor pin without specifying the anchor position, maybe top, bottom, left or right, you know, the label, the, the component will be placed automatically where? At the top left, the 0, 0, 0,0 point. And that is why I have it here. This is the label I have here. Now, before anything, I want to make my label look somewhat like this. That has a, a white background, a white foreground and a kind of sky blue background. All right. So let's try and achieve that first. So I'll say I'll first create a, a background property for my label. So let's copy this background here and then have it for my label as well. So I'll say header label background this time around. Header label background. All right. I named this this background after the label. I want it to. Uh, I want. Uh, I want to apply it to. So that is why I have it here. Now the background proper. The background here will not be white, but rather it will be that blue, sky blueish color. So and that is what I want. I will. I will let's use a color picker to pick it from here. So. So we have the color, the hexadecimal value of the color, and that is what I have here. So now, let me apply the background property, the background to my what? To my label. So I'll just simply say, just like I applied it, just like I applied it to the anchor pin, I can apply it to my label here as well. I'll just say header label dot set background set background to what header label background and that is what i have now let's give it some uh, height some width and height as well so that it becomes big and bold all right 
So let's give it uh, a preferred size, a preferred height this time around. A preferred height of about uh, 45 pixels and let's give it a bolder font, a bolder and a bigger font. Set font as what font dot font. So here we have a number of static methods in the font class. All right, we have one that takes the family, the, the, the name of the family, the font weight, the font posture, the, and the size you want. And here we also have one that takes three parameters, which are the, the font family, the font weight, the, the size. We have one that takes one parameter each. All right. So here I want to change the font weight and at the same time the size. So I will use the one that takes two parameters, the font weight and size. Okay, so the, because there is none that takes such two parameters, because I want to change the font width and size, so I will simply use one that takes three parameters, the one that takes the font weight, I mean the, the font family name, the font weight and the size. So let's use the family name, the system family name, system and uh, the, a font weight of bold yes and a size of about um, let's say 25 all right so let's try and see what we have here so i have changed the background color of my label and i have changed the font so and that is what we have here the background color is applied the size is applied as well and the weight all right so now i want the label I want the label to have the width of this container, the width of the container, just like we have here, the width of the container. So instead of setting the width using the pref, set pref width method, I can simply anchor it to the left and to the right because it is placed on an anchor pin. So I can simply anchor it to the left and the right and that makes it what? That makes it fit to that width. All right? So that is what I am going to do here. I'm going to anchor it using the anchor property, anchor pin dot what set left anchor, right? Of of either label to what zero because it is going to start from the from the zero point from the left. All right. I want it to also be anchored to the zero point at the right, and that is why I'm going to change this to right anchor. And that is what I have. Now, if I show this page, I, if, I, if I show my, my page again, you see I have, I have it. All right? I have it. So now, what remains now is to kind of move this text to show at the center. And you know what property that, that, that takes? Just like that of um, flopping, what we did. You just go by saying add label dot set alignment. The alignment property places it at the what at whatever position you want to pos to 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 place it. All right. So that is what we have. We have the welcome label, the the welcome page label. We have it placed where we want it to be placed. So let's increase the size of our page, of our the width. To be precise, to about 420, so so that we we'll see we have more more view of our page. So this is what we have, all right. This is what we have. So it is getting pretty much like this one. Now let's change the this the the the, de the text color. Let's change it to white as well for the header level. So we'll say header level dot set text field. To what color white set text fill to color white all right so we have it it is done now what remains now is <laughs> the next component okay before the next component we want our we want 
our label to come down a bit. We want it to come down a bit. We can use anchor top for, for, for this uh, sake as well. But then we don't have to be using anchor anchor for everything. Let's set the layout. Since we are using anchor pin and anchor pin supports layout as well, we are not anchoring our component, our label on the Y axis. So if we use the, the, the set layout Y property or for our component, it is going to what, be positioned where we put it. That is, the anchor position is not going to affect it. Since we are not anchoring, we are not anchoring along the Y axis at all. All right? So if we are anchoring along the Y axis, just like I said earlier, if we are anchoring, be it the top anchor or the bottom anchor, and we are going, we want to use the set layout Y property, the, the anchoring position will definitely affect that. It will totally override it. So the component is going to obey the anchor position instead of what the layout Y property. All right? So now, because we are not anchoring along the Y axis, that is why I want to use what? I want to use the what? The set layout property. Set layout Y property. So let's change the layout Y property to 25 instead of 0. So we have our component come down a bit just like we have here. Just like we have here. So it comes down a bit. All right? That is the layout Y. All right? So that is how to uh, make use of layout and anchor positions. All right? For, anchor, for components that you wish to place on anchor pin.